Welcome fellow bookworms to Riz Den. My name is Whitney and today I am happy to announce I finally completed my ABC author challenge. Now I started this challenge going on two years ago now and I finished it in July so it took me about a year and just over a half a year so a year and a half roughly to finish the challenge. I was hoping to do it in a year and I definitely could have if I had pushed myself, um, but the last two books ended up just kept getting rolled over, rolled over, rolled over, but I did finally get them read, which I'm so happy about. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through all the books. Some of them I'm going to be unhauling, some of them I'm going to be keeping, and we'll just kind of see how we did. Definitely didn't have as many five stars um, as I was expecting. Now, when I first started the challenge, I wasn't doing star ratings. And then after like the first six books or so, I started doing star ratings. And then the last group, I stopped doing star ratings in October of last year. So the last little bit minus the two I completed <laughs> recently when I started using, you know, Goodreads and such again this year. Um, there was a chunk that I hadn't star rated, so I did kind of go back through. I watched some of my old videos just to see my fresh thoughts on these books, which if you're interested in those and getting like the fresh thoughts on these books, I'll definitely leave the playlist link down below. Now, when I kind of stopped doing star ratings and such, I wasn't updating either. So some of these were in wrap ups, but I didn't put those on the playlist necessarily. So there is kind of a gap, like I wasn't very committed to this series. Uh, overall, it really didn't get a lot of views. So I don't know how this video will do, but I did want to make it because I did like doing the challenge. And I am going to go ahead in 2024 and I'm going to do the ABC, I called it the book challenge, but like the title challenge. So instead of going by author's names, I'm going to find books that start with the different letters. And I am excited to do that challenge, but like I said, that will be for 2024. I'm um, going to finish out the year with everything I already have to read. So really, really excited that I finally completed this challenge. I did have a lot of good books. And most of the books fell in the middle between the three and four star range, which isn't bad at all. Three stars means I still enjoyed it. There was just things I did not like about it. Um, like it was kind of 50-50 as far as that goes. Four stars means I really enjoyed it, but there were things that kind of turned me off of it a little bit. And then five stars, obviously, I completely loved it. Two stars, I didn't love it. I really struggled to get through it, but I was able to read it. And then there's my DNF which I never rate DNF books on like Goodreads or anything like that, but I do put them now, you know, not back then when I first started the challenge, but now I do put them in my journal um, as one star. So typically if I DNF a book, it's a one star for me. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. This is probably going to be a longer video. I do have my notes. Now, like I said, it's been going on two years since I started this challenge. Um, it took me a year and a half to finish. So surprisingly enough, some of the earlier books have still really stuck in my mind. Um, and some of the later books that I was kind of like, huh, how did I feel about that one again? Um, so my thoughts aren't the freshest. I'm going to kind of just give you my thoughts based on what's still in my mind. Like I said, some of them I did have to refresh myself a little bit watching my videos and such, but this is my thoughts two years later on these books, and I'll let you know whether I'm going to keep them or not. So the first one is, of course, letter A, and for that I had found Margaret Atwood, The Heart Goes Last. So these were all thrifted books. That's part of my ABC challenge is finding books at the thrift store. Just you know, to expand my horizons a little bit, get books that I didn't wouldn't necessarily pick up. Uh, and so this was obviously an X library You can see the, the shiny film on it. And I wasn't familiar with Margaret Atwood at all. I learned since I found this one, you know, that she wrote The Handmaid, the Handmaid's Tale, um, which I never read that, obviously. I, the show I never watched. I was familiar with the show just on previews and people talking about it, but I had never actually watched it. So this was my first time reading Margaret Atwood. It was definitely a little bit weird. I ended up giving this one, this is one, again, I didn't rate initially. 
Um, and I ended up going with four star when I was kind of refreshing myself. It definitely has still stuck with me. And when I was talking about it, when I was doing the update and such, I was saying how I would really like to reread this again as like a book of the month, which I used to do book of the months where I would pick a book for the month and then I would do discussion questions on that book. And I thought this would be a really, really good one for those discussion questions. Um, and basically this one you have, I forget, I'm not going to remember any of the characters' name, Stan and Charmaine, and they live in a world, like, it's kind of dystopian, but there's this project happening where they take people and they put them in this city, and they live, I think, six months in, like, a house and, you know, have jobs and such, and then six months they're kind of, like, in this prison sort of it's not like a punishment prison but they're there and they do like hard labor and such um and then another couple that was in the prison goes into their house so they're sharing this house with the couple but it's six months off six months on and they're not allowed to interact in any way and it was just really really weird like one the social kind of experiment aspect and then two Charmaine and the guy from the next six months start having an affair and then Stan's like trying to figure out what's going on and such so it's just it's really was interesting for sure and there's definitely scenes that have kind of stuck with me so this is one I am going to keep for now because I do want to reread it and I think I will you know try to do discussion questions for it I really like coming up with discussion questions it really kind of helps my thought process and such but obviously slows down the reading because I have to take time for the discussion questions but yeah I think this one I'm going to hold on to for now um and I did debate whether giving it a three or four star and just because it has stuck with me and it does have kind of those moral questions, which I love, that's why I ended up giving it a four star based on my foggy memory of it right now. So this one's going to stay for now. And then next we, of course, have my B author. Um, and for that one, I had found Marie Benedict. And this is The Mystery of Mrs. Christie. And this taught me something. I wasn't, I mean, obviously I know who um, Agatha Christie is. I did try to read one of her books. Like, I never read her, and I did try one book, and it's just, I don't like those types of murder mysteries. Like, they're not for me. But I didn't realize that Agatha Christie had 11 days where she just completely disappeared. And so this book is based on, you know, it's fiction, uh, speculation on what potentially happened during those 11 days, but it goes back and forth from when Agatha Christie met her husband to the events of those 11 days. So it just goes back and forth. And I absolutely love this one. Like I was obsessed with it when I read it and gave it five stars for sure. Um, like I said, I wasn't star rating at this point, but based on my memory of my enjoyment of this, definitely a five star read. This one obviously is going to be staying. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping it. And I definitely look forward to rereading it again now and kind of seeing my thoughts on it. But yeah, I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. So that was definitely a win. Then let's see here. We obviously have our C author. And so for this one, I found Mary Higgins Clark, A Stranger is Watching. And this one I ended up giving four stars again. I didn't star rate it at the time, but based on my memory of it, I did. And this one was cool. It kind of dealt with, um, like, death row, and I know there was, like, a reporter involved. So I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for this one because I can't remember it exactly. But there's, again, scenes that I remember, like a train station scene and everything like that that are kind of there in my mind. So it says, in this breathtaking shocker by gifted author of Where Are the Children, a series of brutal and terrifying murders is the starting point for, this, for a story of such astonishing speed, 
drama and terror that the reader is unable to put the book down without finishing it and is held in suspense until the final surprising page. At the heart of Mary Higgins Clark's new book is a group of people whose lives have been shattered by a murder and who are still trying to cope with the consequences. Steve, whose young wife Nina was killed in her own home. Neil, their six-year-old son, who witnessed the killing. Sharon, a journalist who has fallen in love with Steve and is trying to win young Neil's trust and affection. And Ronald Thompson, the man convicted of the killing, who continues to maintain that he is innocent as the hour of his execution approaches. Their lives are bound together not only by the murder none of them can forget, but by the fact that Steve is in favor of capital punishment, while Sharon is deeply opposed to it and has campaigned publicly for the sparing of Thompson's life. Yet there is one person, other person involved in their lives, the stranger, waiting, watching, about to plunge them into an abyss of fear, terror, and shock. The stranger who knows how Nina died holds the key to Thompson's life. Um, in a remarkable tale that moves from suburban Connecticut to the bowels of New York's Grand Central Station to the prison where the young man awaits execution, Mary Higgins Clark succeeds once again in carrying the reader into a convincing, closed, and totally real circle of terror where everything is plausible, even the unexpected, spine-tingly nightmare ending. And I don't remember how it ends. Like, my memory is very bad. I'm a big rereader, and one of the reasons I can do that is because my memory is so bad. Um, that is kind of fresh. Like, I have, it's kind of a, like, it's very familiar when I reread, but it's also stuff is fresh because I don't really remember what happened. But because I have read it before, it has a familiar feeling to it. So it's always kind of a comfort to reread. I don't have to work as hard, even though I have no clue what happened. So the story's fresh. So this is another one I'm planning on keeping, and I do want to reread at some point. Um, but like I said, there are certain scenes that kind of stick out in my mind. And so yeah, this one is staying. So, so far, three for three. They got a good good thing going. Fortunately, my D author did break that streak. So this one, I did end up giving three stars. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I was pronouncing it kind of dime, um, but it's Dead Man Docking by Mary D Dime. So not sure how to pronounce that last name. But again, this is kind of like a murder mystery um, but it's kind of that satire that I don't really like. And so this one, I forget, again, the character's name, so I'm not good at that. Um, let's see. So you have Judith and her cousin, Rini. And they end up going on this luxury ship. And, of course, there's a murder. And so then they're trying to figure out who done it. And I just, I'm not a big fan of these. And this was so over the top. It wasn't really believable. But it was fun, which is why I got three stars. I'm not going to be keeping this one. This one is going. I have no interest in rereading it ever again. It's not for me. So this one is definitely going to be unhauled. Um, but, you know, it was fun for what it was. I'm just not a big whodunit murder mystery person, which is where the problem lies, I think, with this one. And so, yeah, that one is going to be unhauled. So then uh, next we have one that just way over my head. This one I did give four stars. This is Winter Tide by Ruth Anna Emery's. This would probably be a five star if I understood it more. Um, it deals with the Cthulhu mythos a lot, uh, which not something I'm familiar with. And it was just so big brained. It was over my head. But I still really, really enjoyed it. I really liked the characters. So you have Afra and uh, her brother Caleb. Um, and they basically, there's an element aspect to it. So you have the air people, which are just kind of like us. You have, I did refresh myself on this one, which is why I have a little bit more grasp of it. You have the water people, which Afra and Caleb are of the water people. And then you have the rock people, which really don't play a part in this. And basically Afra and Caleb, their town gets completely wiped out and they get sent to like a concentration camp. And then the only way to get out is when the Japanese are in the concentration camp. And then when they release the Japanese, they get released along with the Japanese. And then you have this guy that comes in and he's trying to, I don't remember exactly what they're trying to figure out. Um, but they end up going to this university. So there's kind of the academia aspect there. And they're just trying to figure out this mystery 
of kind of what happened, their town and everything like that. And it's really cool. I did not realize this is part of a series. Somebody commented on the video and was like, oh, you should try, you know, the next book too. And I was like, I didn't even know it was part of a series. So I'm definitely going to, at some point, want to get that book. But one, I love this cover. Like, it's just such a cool cover. I think it's just the vibes are, I love it. And so, yeah, I do plan on keeping this one, obviously. I do want to reread it at some point and see if I can grasp it a little bit better. Um, and then I would love, you know, I probably would, when I get, am able to get the next one, I'll probably reread it at that point. But this one is definitely staying, like I said, probably would have been a five star if I understood it more. But that's not the fault of the author. That's a fault of my own brain. <laughs> so there's a, a cat thinking about jumping up. So if she does chaos may ensue but yeah definitely really really enjoyed this one even though it was too big brained for me um that was definitely a win so that one's staying then we have this old big chunker which my husband convinced me to get so this is when i did start doing my star ratings um so this is the tenets of time by thomas flanagan and this one is really 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 kind of cool so you have it it kind of spans time um and it goes through um like the irish republic brotherhood or whatever when the kind of the rebellion after you know the famine and such and you're following these three characters and one's kind of goes to america and then you know the other two are are in the UK and whatnot. Um, I don't know if they're in the UK. Well, one is in Parliament, so he does kind of go, cause, and I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Um, but basically, it deals with the Irish Rebellion and such. So, this one took me forever to read. I ended up on my star rating giving it four and a half uh, stars, which. At that time, I was really surprised I did a half star because I didn't generally do that at this time. Now I do on Storygraph, um, and then I just round down for Goodreads. Um, but this one, yeah, it was four and a half stars, and it probably would have been five stars too if it wasn't such a hard read. Like, it took a lot to read. Um, it was definitely a struggle. I, I really pushed myself, and... Um, it just, it, it, it was a lot to read and it was a lot to go in your brain, but it was really, really well written and I learned a lot. Like I was looking up stuff and whatnot and I did learn a lot. So it was definitely worth it. I don't know that I'll reread it, but I do think I'm going to go ahead and keep, keep it. Um, I mean, I tabbed it all up. Like there's so many tabs that I did and everything. So maybe at some point, like 10 years or so down the line, I might be interested in reading it. At this point, I'm not, but I do want to keep it because it was really impactful and it was really, really well written. It's just a lot of information. It's such a chunky book. So really, really good. Like I said, not quite five star, but I did give it four and a half. So that one is staying. Then we have probably my least favorite read from the whole ABC author challenge, minus the two I did, I did, did deem that too. Um, so this one was Sue Grafton's T is for Trespass, and I just, I like the premise of it, because it kind of deals with like elder abuse and such, um, but the writing, I really struggled with the writing. I did not love this one. This one I gave a two star. It said DNFs are generally one stars for my purposes. Um, even though I don't log them. I don't rate them online. But this one was a two star. It was definitely a struggle to get through. The only reason I pushed myself to read it was because I did like the premise. And it was for this challenge. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't like the writing. I have no plans of continuing the series like it's the whole I mean it would be kind of cool because you know it's based ABC um for her writing purposes but I just no this one's going to be unhauled I did tab like a couple spots um but I just it it 
it wasn't for me. Um, but it was like the premise was kind of interesting with kind of that whole elder abuse like you have. I'll go ahead and read the synopsis on this one too. In what may be her most unsettling novel to date, Sue Grafton's T is for Trespass is also her most direct confrontation with the forces of evil. Beginning slowly with the day-to-day -day life of a private eye, Grafton suddenly shifts from the voice of Kinsey Mahone to that of Solana Rojas, introducing readers to a chilling sociopath. Rojas is not her birth name. It is an identity she cunningly stole, an identity that gives her access to private caregiving jobs. The true horror of this novel builds with excruciating tension as the reader foresees the awfulness that lies ahead. The wrenching suspense lies in whether Kinsey Mahone will realize what is happening in time to intervene. T is for trespass, dealing with the issues of identity theft, elder abuse, betrayal of trust, and the breakdown in the institutions. Charged with caring for the weak and the dependent could not be more timely. It targets an all too real rip in the social fabric. So like I said, that aspect of it was really cool, but I did not like the writing. So I'm not going to be continuing along with that author at all. And that one's going to be getting unhauled for sure. So next we have my H author, which was Anne Hillerman. Again, another one my husband kind of pointed me toward. Um, because he was familiar with Tony Hillerman, which is Ann Hillerman's dad. Um, and she kind of took up the reins uh, and continued on with his Leap Horn and Chi series. Which I read a couple of those. I definitely prefer his writing to this one. But I did give this one four stars, which I was surprised by. I didn't. I thought it was more of a three star looking back now after reading Tony Hillerman and such. But there was some, like aspects of like the Native American lore and such that I really really enjoyed and I enjoyed the setting in the you know southwest I'm in New Mexico and it kind of takes place Arizona New Mexico so I did enjoy a lot of aspects of this book um but again it's kind of that murder mystery element um this one's more like detective murder mystery than whodunit murder mystery which I do better with than the whodunit type because at least in my mind like the whodunit type murder mysteries it's like they're not qualified like why are they investigating this like it never makes sense to me like what the deal is where these ones at least you have you know a detective or a police officer or something it makes a little bit more sense but yeah in this one um you have they're kind of split up because you says uh Jim Chi and Bernadette Manuelito are a couple at this point in the series. Um, and so doing a good deed for a relative for a relative offers a perfect opportunity for Sergeant, Sergeant Jim Chi and his wife, Officer Bernie Manuelito, to get away from the daily grind of police work. But two cases will call them back from their vacation and separate them, one near Shiprock and the other at iconic Monument Valley. Chi follows a series of seemingly random cryptic clues that lead to a missing woman, a cold-blooded thug, and a mysterious mound of dirt and rocks that could be a gravesite. Bernie has her hands full managing the fallout from a drug bust gone wrong, uncovering the origins of a fire in the middle of nowhere, and looking into an ambitious solar energy development with long-ranging consequences for Navajo land. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It was, the writing was just a little disconnected for me, but I, like I said, I really did enjoy the setting and the Native American aspect and such. This one, I think I'm going to keep for now. I would be interested in rereading it at some point. Um, so I am going to keep it for now, but it might get unhauled later on down the road. So there is that one. And then we have our I authors. So um, this is one where I couldn't find an author with the last name I, but I did find with the first name. And so when I was doing my roles, I decided if that was the case, if I couldn't find them by the last name, then I would need to do two books. So the first one that I read for this was Isabel Allende, uh, Kingdom of the Golden Dragon. This was my first Isabel Allende, and I really, really loved it. I've since read the, this is the second in a trilogy. I've since read the first one, and I'm actually going to be reading the third one next month. So I'll finally have that completed. 
Uh, and I did really, really enjoy this. I wasn't sure. This is another one. I kind of read this one out of order. Um, so I was trying to do them in order, but because the tenets of time was taking me so long and such, uh, this one kind of got out of order. Um, but I wasn't sure what I would have rated this one. Like, I remember it, but it's like, how much did I enjoy it? And the first one I ended up giving four stars. So I decided, you know, based on my memory of both of them, I decided to go ahead and give this four stars as well. Um, I did really enjoy it though, but basically you have Alexander and his best friend Nadia, which he meets in the first book in the Amazon jungle. This one is taking place in the Himalayas and he basically was sent in the first one to his grandmother um, and his grandmother is a journalist for like a geographic magazine and so she ends up, well, you're coming with me, and they go to the Amazon, he meets Nadia. So this one, now they're in the Himalayas, um, and his his grandmother's, you know, working and such. Um, and so I really like, again, the atmosphere, the setting. Uh, I like that snowy aspect. I actually read this, um, I think, in December of 2021, I want to say. But, um, so yeah, this one you have... Um, they go to the frosty peaks of the Himalayas, they seek the fabled golden dragon, a sacred statue and priceless oracle coveted by a greedy, powerful outsider. To prevent the desecration of the holy relic, they will need the help of a sage Buddhist monk, his young royal disciple, and a fierce tribe of yeti warriors. But even the mystical power of their totemic animal spirits may not be enough to save the teenagers and this remote world from the destructive encroachment of civilization. So there is definitely kind of a magical realism element to this one. And yeah, this one I, I really enjoyed. Definitely going to be keeping this uh, trilogy, and I do plan on reading it again at some point. So there's that one. Then the second one I got was Irving Stone, The Origin, which this is all based on Charles Darwin and his like travels on the sea and such. So this is another one. It was very thick, very dense, took me a while to read. But another one I really, really enjoyed. I did end up giving this one four stars as well. Um, it did... I enjoyed the first half, the second half I kind of struggled through because the first half is when he's at the sea and then the second half goes kind of through the rest of his life. So it kind of drug a little bit. Uh, so I did only get four stars. If it was based on the first half of this book, it would have been five stars for sure. Um, but it was really kind of interesting, you know, kind of being in that place of him traveling and discovering these plants and animals and such. Um, and then even after when he's home and he's kind of, writing and it kind of takes you through his life that was a little bit interesting but it was kind of a repetitive thing like he would get sick and then he would write <laughs> he would get a little bit better um and then he'd get sick again and write and it was just very repetitive uh so like I said the second half was a struggle which is why I only got four stars but another one I actually am going to keep um I, I did find it really interesting I did just tab it a little bit um, have some stars on there um, where the parts that I really, really enjoyed. And so this is one I would be interested in rereading and actually fully annotating. Like, I only kind of half annotate. Like, I'll put tabs on parts I find interesting, but I really, I'm not comfortable writing in books. Um, but yeah, this is one I would be interested in actually annotating. So I'm going to keep that one. Then we have my J author, which I found Craig Johnson, The Cold Dish. So this is obviously the, you can see the little circle here, um, the show Longmire is based on, which I've never watched that show. I think I tried and I didn't really get into it. Uh, and so this one ended up getting three stars. Um, again, it's that mystery element, the detective murder mystery element which it was fine. I did, it again, enjoy kind of the setting. Um, and I think I enjoyed the overall aspect with, like, the Native American mystery. Uh, so this one, 
it does deal with an assault. <laughs> so there's that. But I do kind of like that. Because there's obviously a problem with um, crimes against Native women kind of not being taken as seriously. Uh, and so it kind of addresses that a little bit. But after 24 years, the sheriff of Wyoming's Absoc Soroka, Absor Absoroka County, Walt Longmire's hopes of finishing out his tenure in peace are dashed when Cody Pritchard is found dead near the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. Two years earlier, Cody had been one of four high school boys given suspended sentences for raping a local Cheyenne girl. Somebody, it would seem, is seeking vengeance, and Longmire might be the only one only thing to stand between the three remaining boys and a sharp forty five seventy buffalo rifle. With lifelong friend Henry Standing Bear, Deputy Victoria Meretti, and a cast of characters both tragic and humorous enough to fill in the vast emptiness of the high plains, Walt Longmire's attempts to see that revenge a dish to see that revenge a dish best served cold is never served at all. So I'm liking this one, even though it's only a three star. I would be interested in rereading it and just kind of seeing my thoughts. My taste is evolving now that I'm reading more variety. Um, and so I would be interested in actually reading this one again. So I think I'm going to keep it. Um, and then let's see here. This cat is wreaking havoc. You are. You're being annoying. This is Adeline. She's been in videos before, briefly, but she knows she's not technically a lot in here, but when I'm videoing, sometimes I let her wander around. So, yeah, you're being snotty. Or, there you are. Alright, go on. Go on. Okay, so next is my Kate author, and one I was pleasantly surprised by. Um, this one, my grandma actually recommended this author to me, and then when I saw it, I was like, sweet, that's perfect. And so this is Chasing Sunsets by Karen Kingsbury. I gave this one a four star. So this one is like a Christian romance. I did not really enjoy the characters or the romance aspect, but you have these angels and they kind of get sent to earth to help guide people. Uh, and I did enjoy that aspect of it. I thought that was really, really cool. I do have the second one in the series. This one is technically the, no, I have the third one. Sorry. This one's technically the second one. The first one is more of a companion though. It's their friends, um, relationship. So there's two, a couple here that are already together. And I think the first one is based on them getting together. And then this is one of that couple's friends. And then this other girl, um, and the third one is, is following these two characters, so the third one definitely follows this one. And I do have it, but yeah, like I said, the characters, he's like a baseball player or something like that. Uh, and then she... I want to say she had cancer? Um... Yeah, Mary Catherine... She wants to pursue, like, charity work and such. Her parents are wealthy, but she wants to pursue charity work and such. So let me just kind of refresh myself here. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't say exactly, but I'm pretty sure she has, like, cancer or such. And that kind of affects her decision. I will say, like, the ending was different than I expected, which I really enjoyed. Um because it doesn't just come all together perfectly. And so that's why you're kind of following along with them in the next one. But I really like that angel aspect. Like, I really, really like that. Um, kind of that show. I, you know, I was so young when we watched it, when it was out, touched by an angel. Um, but I do like the vibes of that show that I remember. And so this kind of is like that. You have these angels coming to earth and guiding people, which I think is, is just a cool premise. So this one definitely going to be keeping, like I said, I do have the second one, which I still need to read. Um, and then we have my L author, which is another four star. This one was, again, something I didn't expect to love as much as I did. And this is The Color of Death by Elizabeth Lowell. 
And this one, you have Kate Chandler has accepted a commission that will solidify her reputation as a world-class gem cutter. But during what should have been a simple transfer, seven rare priceless sapphires vanish without a trace. Along with their courier, her brother Lee, who now quite possibly is dead, and suddenly Kate is on the run, pursued by federal agents who believe she is a criminal mastermind of a cunning bait-and-switch. Only Kate suspects the terrifying truth that she stumbled into a conspiracy of deceit, betrayal, and cold-blooded murder that goes far beyond the simple, a simple jewel heist. Getting Sam Groves, the FBI special agent who is her constant shadow, to trust her is to step in the right direction. But it may be too little too late in a bloody game where terror dictates her every move because a ruthless assassin has already received an order that Kate Chandler must die. So, yeah, I don't remember the specifics of this one again, but I remember really, really enjoying the writing, really enjoying the story. Um, I These kind of, like, thriller-type books, I do actually really enjoy. Um, I don't gravitate towards them, but when I pick them up, I do enjoy them. And they're still, you know, it's kind of weird that I don't enjoy more, like, detective mysteries um, or whodunit mysteries when I enjoy, like, ones like this. Um, but yeah, because it is still has those same elements in there. It's just something that's a little bit more. So I actually really enjoyed this writing. I haven't read anything else by this author, but I would be interested in picking up something else by this author because I did enjoy this one. So this one I am going to be keeping. Then we have, oh, this one was really, really good. So this is my M author. And this one, I also only gave a four star. I'm not sure because my feelings on it now um, would be more five-star energy, so I'm not sure why I only gave it a four-star, but that's The People's Act of Love by James Meek. Uh, so this one kind of deals with, like, Russian, um, like, political upheaval and such. And so in this one, in a remote Siberian village amid a lawless, unforgiving landscape lives Anna uh, Petrovna. A beautiful, willfully self-reliant widowed mother, a mystical separatist Christian sect, and a stranded regiment of restless Czech soldiers, and an eerie local shaman lived nearby, all struggling against the elements and great social upheaval to maintain a fragile coexistence. Out of the wood trudges Samarin, and in it an escapee from Russia's northernmost prison camp with a terrifying outlandish story to tell about his journey. Immediately apprehended, he is brought before the Czech regiment's megalomaniac, Captain Matula. But the stranger's appearance has caught the attentions of others, including Anna. The stranger, his bizarre story, if it is to be believed, and the apparent murder of the local shaman quickly become a flashpoint for this village. Temperatures rise, alliances shift, and betrayals emerge. So, yeah, I just remember really, really enjoying this one. Um, I like the atmosphere, kind of the political uh, upheaval, kind of the mystery of this guy that shows up. Like, I really actually enjoy this one. So, again, it's not very fresh in my mind, so I don't know the details. But this is definitely one I'm going to be keeping and one I will be rereading and seeing if it actually ends up being a five star. Because I'm not sure why it wasn't at this point. But yeah, really, really enjoyed that one. So, so far I'm only getting rid of two. Everything else is staying. Um, the next one I ended up picking up was for my N author. Again, this was another situation. There's two books because I couldn't find... At the thrift store, again, there's a thrifting element to this. I couldn't find a last name that started with the letter N. So I got two that started, the first name started with that letter. So the first one is Natasha Preston's um, The Seller. And this one I ended up giving three stars. This one, though, I am going to be on Holly, even though I'm keeping some other three stars. This one just, I don't know, it wasn't my favorite. I did like aspects of it, obviously, that's why I got three stars, but basically in this one you have um, Lily, and she gets abducted, and he has these set of girls that he has locked in his basement, and they're all named based on different, he changes their name and their different flowers, uh, and so it kind of deals with them being trapped in this basement together. They're trying to figure out how to live in the small space with these strange, other strange girls, plus dealing with the abuse that they endure from this man. 
Uh, so again, the pre pre premise of it was fine. Um, there's just something about the writing that, you know, it's a little darker, which makes it a little harder of a read. But there's just something about the writing that I didn't really love. So even though I enjoyed aspects of it, I wasn't, I didn't love it. So this one is going to be unhauled. So there's that one. Then we had Buried Lives by Nancy Starr for my second book. And this one, this one got three stars as well. Um, but this one it was a very much a psychological thriller. So you have the main character, Joy. Uh, and she is pregnant and she, when she was younger, her brother had gotten kidnapped. Um, and she's kind of blocked out that time period in life. And now she's starting to have flashbacks and she's married to her brother's best friend from that time. So now later she's married to that best friend. Um, and yeah, there's kind of a psychological element, a lot of gaslighting. And so it's like, is she crazy or are people gaslighting her? Like what's going on? Cause it's everybody, like it's her doctors, it's her mom, it's her husband. Uh, and so this one, it was three stars. That's all I really remember about it is again, that psychological element, which I really love. Like I love like psychological thriller type books. And so I'm going to hang on to this one. It is super short. When I was reading this one, I was sick and one of the dogs was sick. I was kind of refreshing myself on this one as well. Um, and so I read it over a weekend, but I was sick. So that might have affected my enjoyment of it a little bit as well. So this one I am going to be hanging on to. Hopefully these books don't fall because they're getting quite high now. Then we have my O author, which originally was supposed to be George Orwell, 1984. Um, this one, I DNF'd. It wasn't for me. Uh, you kind of have that futuristic utopian society, uh, and I just, I did not like it. I didn't like the writing. Um, and so I was like, why am I going to suffer through this book when I don't like it? I think I read about 50 pages, and then I was just like, nope. Like, because those 50 pages were a big struggle for me. So I DNF this one. This one is going to go. Um, there's no reason for me to keep it just because it's a classic. It's going to go. So yeah, this one DNF'd. And so this wasn't really part of the rules, but I decided if I dnf my original choice, I would go ahead and read two books for that as well. So for this one, first I picked up, I did actually thrift this. Um, but it was one I picked up because I'm collecting the Dear America series, not for the specific project, but I decided to go ahead and read it. So this is Standing in the Light, The Captive Diary of Catherine Carey Logan, Delaware Valley, Pennsylvania, 1763. And this one is by Mary Pope Osborne. Yeah, Mary Pope Osborne. So you can see that one. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and read this one, and then I had another one that I had thrifted that I was like, worked for this. So this one, you have, um, Catherine Carrie, Carrie Logan, and she ends up getting kidnapped by this tribe of Native Americans, um, and then, you know, she gets rescued and goes back home. But it was really kind of, I liked how this one was done. I didn't rate this one. I don't typically rate the Dear America series. Um, I think I have a couple of them, but typically... You know, I don't because they're so short and they're children's books that it's just kind of, it falls in a different category for me. But this one I thought was really, really well done um, because her father is actually very compassionate towards the Native Americans and he's frustrated because they're not treated well. And that's what leads up to these children being um, kidnapped is because of the way they were treated. Uh, so yeah, I actually really liked this one and I thought it was well done. Uh, so obviously I'm collecting these. This one's going to be staying because I am collecting these books. So that one was the first one I read since I DNF Orwell. And the next one I read was Del Delia Owens' uh, Where the Crawdads Sing. So this is one I did find at the thrift store. Um, it was obviously kind of big for a while, and then the movie came out and everything. This one actually got five stars for me. I loved it. I loved that nature aspect, um, the kind of coming of age story. Like, I love that kind of thing. And then you kind of have that 
upheaval to um, kind of that political aspect within the community, like a smaller community, um, of her being blamed for one of the Golden Boys' death and such. So I loved how it ended, too. Like, this book, I just loved everything about it. I know there's a bit of controversy with the author herself and what her husband and I think stepson I'm, don't quote me on that though it might be her actual son um there's you know talk that they might have shot a poacher and such and so there's a bit of controversy about that but it's like it's all speculation um in my mind based on what I know like obviously I haven't deep dive in it but even if it's not like poachers are dangerous so and they're doing wrong um, so yeah, I, I don't know about the controversy, I don't know enough about it, but despite whatever this book I love, I'm definitely keeping it, definitely plan on rereading it, I really enjoyed the movie as well. Uh, so yeah, this one's staying. Then, let's see here, we have our P author, which this was Kayla, Kal Kalina Price, <laughs> and this is Grave Witch. And this one I gave four stars. So um, this one I actually really, really enjoyed. So you, this one, you have a private investigator and consultant for the police. Alex Kraft has seen a lot of dark magic. But even though she's on good terms with Death himself, which I always love Death as a character. Like one of my favorite things in the book is if Death is a character. Um, who happens to look fantastic in jeans. Nothing has prepared her for their latest case. Alex is investigating a high-profile murder when she is attacked by the shade she's raising, which should be impossible. To top off her day, someone makes a serious attempt on her life, but death saves her. Guess he likes having her around. Uh, and so, yeah, I really, really like this one. It definitely has vibes of, like, the Dresden Files, but you have a female main and... I personally don't like the Harry Dresden. Um, you know, he's kind of, the writing's very kind of misogynistic and such, which I don't like. So this one, I like the aspect and a little bit of like, um, I think around the same time I read Laurel K. Hamilton, uh, one of her books, like her main series, I forget the name of it. Um, but I read one of those, so it kind of has a little bit of those vibes as well, which I just had a really, really good time. Um, four stars because it wasn't, like, absolutely amazing, but definitely a solid read. Definitely one I'm going to be keeping. This is a, a part of a series, and I would love to get my hands on more in this series for sure. So there's that one. Then we had our Q author, which originally it was going to be Regrets Only by, uh, I think, Sally Quinn. I'll put a picture up, of course, but I DNF that one. I don't think I got like 10 pages in. It was just not for me. It was like a political book, um, like high society politics, um, but the whole first part that I, I read was all about setting up for this big party and it was like, this, this, this is not for me. So anyway. I then, I went to the library, I since bought this book because I enjoyed it that much, and I got Spencer Quinn, Dog On It, um, and this one is again a kind of a whodunit murder mystery type book, but so cute, because you have uh, Chet, who is a dog, and he is kind of the narrator of the book, and then you have his human, who I think is a, a private and get investigator, yeah. Um, but you have a frantic mother searching for her teenage daughter, and things just kind of spiral from there. But I love the aspect of Chet being the narrator. I thought that was so cute and so well done. I did, this is another series, this is the first in the series. Um, and I got one that's later on in the series that I found at the thrift store, but I haven't read it yet. And I'm so excited to read it. But yeah, this one I originally got from the library. Loved it so much. I found it and I was like, yep, I'm going to pick that up because I really enjoyed that. So there was that one. And then the other one was, again, kind of a whodunit murder mystery. And it was the Siamese Twin Mystery by Ellery Queen, uh, which I had never heard of this author. This one I did get used. It has some, like, water damage on the back and such. 
But this one, I had never heard of this author. Um, and then I found like a whole collection of their works at this used bookstore. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. I need a new Q author. And so this is a Hugh Dunnett mystery. This one, I think I gave three stars as well. Um, Dog on it, I gave four stars. But this one, it still has those vibes, which I didn't love. But I kind of like the atmosphere of it. They're like trapped in this mansion on top of a hill. There's a fire. And so like they, they're they stuck there with these people that they don't really know. But they are, um, it's like a father and son duo who investigate crimes and such so a little bit more believable but there's still aspects like why like the fire and everything but I it was fine <laughs> like I didn't love it because it's a whodunit murder mystery but I didn't hate it either I do think this one I might unhaul um yeah, I'm probably going to unhaul. I don't have any interest in rereading it. So, yeah, this one's going to go on the unhaul pile. But as far as whodunit murder mysteries went go, it wasn't as bad as some others. So, then we have The Orchid House by Lucinda Riley. This was another four star. Um, and this one was one that I actually really enjoyed. I had good feelings based on the cover and reading the synopsis, but you have a concert pianist, Julia Forrester, um, and she spent many hours in the hot house of Wharton Park, grand estate where her grandfather tended exotic orchids. Years later, while struggling with overwhelming grief over the death of her husband and young child, she returns to this tranquil place. There she reunites with Kit Crawford, heir to the estate and her possible salvation. When they discover an old diary, Julia seeks out her grandmother to learn the truth behind a love affair that almost destroyed the estate. Their search takes them back to the 1940s when Harry, a former heir to Wharton Park, married his young society bride, Olivia, on the eve of World War II. When the two lovers are cruelly separated, the impact will be felt for generation to come. So it kind of goes back and forth from present day and Julia and what she's dealing with to the past, like World War II and, and, and such. I really, really enjoyed it, but there were some weird elements that were like, eh, was that really necessary? Um, like some of the twists were just kind of like, eh, no. Um, but overall, I actually really, really enjoyed this one. I actually have another one I found at the thrift store by this author um, that I'm really looking forward to reading at some point, but it's a big one, so I'm like, <laughs> that's kind of uh, having me hesitate, but this one, really enjoyed, definitely going to be keeping, definitely see myself rereading it. I really like the aspects of, like, the past, the past timeline was one of my favorites. Um, I kind of wanted the twist from that was pretty obvious, um, but really, really enjoyed it overall, so there's that one. They're kind of starting to wobble a little bit. Then we have my S author, so Harold Sheshitcher. I'm probably between that. And so this is called Nevermore. And this one, what did I end up giving this one? I gave it a three star, but ah, uh, it was weird. <laughs> this one is another one I'm going to go ahead and unhaul. It was just weird. So it's based on Edgar Allan Poe. Um, but you also have, um, what was the, I forget the other guy, but it's like another character from history that you want to expect, you know, their paths to cross and such. So it was really just weird. And he's, um, a girl Poe is a young, struggling writer played by dreadful rumination and horrific visions. Suddenly he is plunged into an adventure beyond his wildest fantasies, a quest for a killer through Baltimore's highest and lowest streets and byways. A string of ghastly murders is linked by one chilling clue, a cryptic word scrawled in blood. It is a terrifying lure that ensnares Poe in a deadly investigation, and along the way his own macabre literary imagination is sparked as he unveils dark realities stranger than any fiction. But yeah, I want to say it was like Tom Bunyan or I don't even know if that's the right name. Um, but yeah, there was another, you know, person from history that they end up pairing up. And it's just really, really weird. 
there were obviously aspects that I enjoyed, like, it kind of has a good creepy atmosphere, but it was just weird. And then the whole relationship between him and his cousin, I was just like, what? Which, again, you know, obviously he really did marry her in real life, but I didn't know that either. <laughs> so... I like learning stuff as I read books, like fictional books that are based on real people. You do learn some stuff. But yeah, this one was weird. So that one's getting unhauled. So that's not actually bad. We're up to six books I'm going to be unhauling. Next, we actually have a nonfiction. So this is my tea author, uh, Channon Tagay, The Lost Book of Moses. This one, I it was one, again, it was after I stopped star reading. And so there was a little bit of a gap before I star rated the last few. Um, so this one, based on my memory, I actually gave five stars. This is a nonfiction, but it really read like a fiction, like you're taking on this ep epic journey of this guy, and he's trying to find the lost book of Moses. Um, there was like a story where this guy claimed he found the lost book of Moses, and then he gets outed as a fraud and so now the he's trying to figure out was it really fake or was it you know somebody didn't want him to get the credit um and the thing disappears and everything so this uh shannon gate goes on like this journey and goes you know across seas and everything so it's landed him in all different kinds of places and he's just trying to figure out whether he this guy was really a fake or whether he really did find something um, and kind of what happened. And so, like I said, it's nonfiction, but it really read like a, a fiction. Like, I was so enthralled with it. Like, I had such a great time with this. So, yeah, definitely really enjoyed this one. Five stars definitely will be keeping. Then we have my you book. And that was Leon Uris, Exodus Revisited. Um, and so this one, I never read uh, Exodus by this author, but this one is just a bunch of like pictures and little notes um, about the pictures. And I did find this one cool, but because it's not really a story, I did just give it three stars. I will be keeping this though. Like it was really kind of interesting to see the different pictures and the little notes on it. Um, I would be interested in actually reading Exodus and then, you know, having this go along with that. So this one will be staying, like I said, three stars just because of what it is. It's not like an actual book. So then we had one that I thought would be fun, but it just, I didn't get it. It's All Mental by Marcel Vertes. Um, and so this one is like, like little picture skits and then just like little quotes that go along with them um so it's all about like psycho psychoanalysis so this one I have a strange fear of lions um and I, I just I didn't get it I, di I didn't get it um there's only one one little quote that um I liked because I understood it and so there's the picture there um, but it's like, you mean to tell me that if Van Gogh had been psychoanalyzed, he wouldn't have cut off his ear? Of course he would, but he would have known why. And I, I liked that one, but the rest of it, I just, I didn't quite understood. I think I am going to keep this one, though, because it's just such a unique book. That even though I didn't love it, it's so unique that I kind of want to keep it. So I think I'm going to keep that one. Then we have... Our W author, so this is Wayne Worcester, um, and this is the monster of St. Marylebone, and this one, I don't really remember. I mean, I sort of do, because I refreshed myself, but this is one that, again, didn't get a star rating. Um, I think I said this one I gave two stars, but uh, this one I ended up going with three stars just because I don't really remember it but this is based on um Sherlock Holmes and this is it was interesting how it was done and I do remember this so it was basically these are cases um or this is a case that wasn't published by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle 
because it was too dark to be published. Um, so that's kind of the premise and how it ties in to the Sherlock Holmes that we all know. And that's basically all I remember. I don't remember the case or anything like that. Um, but I don't think it was a difficult read. So it says, yeah, a, bru a brutal madman is on the loose in London's Tony St. Marylebone neighborhood. Prominent shopkeepers are being viciously murdered and mutilated, and Scotland Yard is at a loss for clues. They have no choice to, but to turn to Sherlock Holmes for a solution. But when Holmes himself falls victim to the killer's violent malice, his mission becomes a personal one. He and Watson continue their search for the murderous demon terrorizing London, and will who and who will do anything to see them dead. And this is part of a series. This is the first in the series. But I don't really remember it. I do. I kind of, when I was refreshing myself on it, um, I had mentioned that the vibes felt very Sherlock Holmes-y, which I've never read Sherlock Holmes, but, you know, watching the movies and such, you know, kind of that banter between him and Watson and such, it had those good vibes. So I think I might keep this one and reread it because I honestly don't know how I felt about it because I can't really remember it. But for right now, for this purpose, it's a three star just because I don't really remember it. And if it was really great, I should have some memory of it. Um, but I do feel like I enjoyed it. So then I don't know how to pronounce this. I looked it up multiple times and I still just don't know. But I think it's Chu Xilong. Um, a Case of Two Cities. So this is obviously my ex-author. This one I did give three stars. Um, and this one you have um, Shanghai Police Department uh, Inspector Chen. And he is assigned to a high-profile anti-corruption case. Um, and so he goes to the United States because the main guy has fled to the main suspect has fled to the United States. And so he goes and it kind of has like this pro proverb aspect, like poetry aspect, um, because the Spectre of Chen also writes. Um, the thing with this one, I didn't love it. It's three stars. One is very political and it has, it deals with like a lot of Chinese politics, which obviously I'm not familiar with, which that would have been fine. Like I'm happy to push, myself outside my comfort zone a little bit, um, experience different cultures. The thing with this one was the plot. It just, <laughs> it just kind of fizzled and it didn't go anywhere. Um, and there was no like big, you know, climax to the book or anything like that. And I was just like, what, what happened? <laughs> like, what happened? Uh, and so yeah, that's kind of where it fell a little short for me. I don't think he has, you know, his whole series. I don't think I'll be picking up any more by this author. Um, but it was kind of nice, even though it was like, I don't understand what's happening because I don't understand Chinese politics at all. Um, it was kind of nice to get a different look at a different culture and kind of a writing style. Um, I really do enjoy reading like translated works and such. Um, where this one, I think he 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 writes like it's not him writing in Chinese and then it being translated. I think he does write his stories in English, um, but I'm not sure for sure. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like the fact that it just kind of fizzled out and I I just was left feeling very disappointed. This wasn't my favorite. I'm debating whether I want to keep this. This one probably, in all honesty, I think I'm going to unhaul this one too because I just, I don't see myself wanting to pick that back up. The only reason I kind of want to keep it is because it is by a Chinese author um, and it has that different cultural aspect. You know what? I think for now I'm going to keep this and then if I do an unhaul later, that one might go. Um, I might try to give it a reread. So then... <laughs> We have the last two books, which took me forever to get to. Like I said, these ones I read this summer um, because I just kept rolling them over, kept rolling them over. And the first one is Eve by W.M. Paul Young. So this is obviously my Y author. I love this. Definitely a five star for me. Kind of has like this sci-fi feel to it. Um, and then it deals with like creation and like you have... The witness, the girl, and the main girl in the story, she's the witness to creation, or a witness 
to creation and it kind of has like this infinity loop thing that's going on like it was so cool and I really liked the author's approach to creation so this is Christian fiction but I think even if you're not a believer um I think this book is actually worth picking up and reading because it was really really cool so if you look at it as kind of just a story I think you would really enjoy it um even though it is Christian fiction uh because I absolutely absolutely love this one um uh, I, I I did go out and get the shack which is kind of what the author is known for um because I love this one so much so I really look forward to reading this one in the future because it just the vibes and everything it was it was really cool so then we have the last book, and that is Who is the River by Paul Zalas. Um, and so this is Getting Lost and Found in the Amazon and Other Places. So this one I only gave a three star. I really enjoyed certain aspects of it, and then other aspects I was like, huh? Um, like, why are you going off on this tangent? Like, what does that have to do with your trip on the Amazon? Which it kind of all comes together in the end. Like, as he's going on this trip on the Amazon, he's reflecting on different times in his life and different travels and relationships and such. So in the end, it does kind of make sense, these tangents that he would go off on. Um, but it was kind of just like, he's kind of like this hippie, like free wheeling spirit dude. Um, and I really liked the parts where he was on the Amazon. I really enjoyed those parts. And then some of the tangents, it's like, what? And, like, some of his viewpoints, it was, like, one, I mean, this was, I think, late 70s, early 80s when he was, you know, going through all this stuff. But, so some of the viewpoints, it's like, that's really an irresponsible viewpoint. But overall, I actually did enjoy my time reading this. Um, it's just I didn't love it because of those tangents, which you, if you've been following my channel, you'll know I'm not a person who enjoys when the author goes off on tangents. Like, it's like, stay, stay on point. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't go over here, stay on point, like, get to it. Uh, and so, yeah, not bad. I do think I'm going to keep this one, um, because it is kind of really stuck, but the whole premise is that he goes to the Amazon with his longtime friend who they've had many adventures together, and they get this guide to go try to find these pyramids on the river, um, but the guy keeps getting lost, and he does, he's, I think he's German, and he doesn't speak very good English, so instead of saying, where is the river, he keeps saying, who is the river, uh, so that's kind of the premise of the name, which I thought was really kind of fun and interesting. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be keeping this one for now as well. So that is everything. So I'm going to be unhauling six books, um, which isn't bad. Like I said, I already unhauled one of them. So technically it's seven from this challenge because I did DNF the, the two and I did have four extras. So I think it was what, 30 books if I'm remembering my alphabet right. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I think overall i really enjoyed this it definitely got me reading some variety and kind of getting outside my comfort zone which i really enjoyed um so yeah overall i think it was definitely a success and i'm really looking forward to reading t different titles as well i definitely think i'm going to be keeping that thrifting element because like i said that kind of makes it instead of searching for a book like you're kind of interested in is kind of left into the hands of fate and you just gotta find what you can find and you know when I did this one like if I read the synopsis and I was like I'm not gonna enjoy that I would obviously put it back and continue searching um and so I'm definitely gonna do that as well like I don't want to suffer which is why I you know can DNF and whatnot but Overall, I really, really enjoyed this challenge, and I definitely read some books I would have never picked up otherwise that was really interesting. Tenants of Time is kind of the big standout of all of these, um, because that one I would have never read if I wasn't doing it for this challenge. And I might have even DNF because there's definitely, you know, so much information going in my brain I would put down, and I want to pick it back up for weeks. Um, and so, yeah, that's one that was good it, it pushed me to read it and I'm actually very thankful it did so overall definitely a success even though it took me way longer than I had planned like I said I wanted to originally do this like within a year maybe just a little over and it took me a year and a half so 
you know, there, there's that aspect. But yeah, if you read any of these, definitely let me know. If you do a version of it, like your own version of an ABC author challenge or book challenge, I know a lot of people do. I would love to know that and like what's so far to date, if you're not finished with it, what's the most surprising book you picked up because of the challenge? I would love to know all that. I'm going to go ahead and leave you here. I know another long video. I personally love long videos. I like to just put them on while I'm doing something else um, and not having, oh, oh that video's over. Let me find something else. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.